Hey everybody, this is Brett, and today I'm going to tell you about the foods that I really avoid at all costs, like the plague, etc. <laughs> and I've told most of you, and you know, that I quit dairy about 14 years ago, something like that. I've lost count, but <clears throat> I really, really look at all the labels and I can see the dairy from a mile away kind of like I can see an attractive woman like oh, oh, <laughs> but um, in any case I don't think that dairy is even a food for humans it's kind of a supplement that people have added they they were needing to eat greens but they didn't want to eat their greens because maybe that made them sick and so they're like well, maybe we can get that animal's milk from it and consume that. And they tried that, and they liked it, and they got addicted to it. And so now they just eat that instead of eating their vegetables. So that doesn't work, and eventually you get loaded full of dairy, mucus, and fat, and your body gets all clogged, and your joints get arthritis and this and that, and you'll get a quadruple bypass from your doctor. And so I just avoid all those things and eat my vegetables because it's better to deal with the pain of something that's natural than to avoid the natural and deal with the unnatural pain that's accompanied from that avoidance. So I also totally avoid wheat, glutinous grains like wheat, barley, oats, and rye. And yes, I don't do well on oats, which is a different kind of gluten, but I still don't do good on that one either. So 14, roughly about the same time ago, 14 years ago, I quit that. And the other day I was at a grocery store and everybody in the store, all the employees were wearing shirts that said gluten free. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and I asked the girl at the check stand, um, she said, no, I'm not gluten-free. We're just promoting gluten-free products. But still, I was like, that is cool because, you see, the world is coming around to me and my thinking and, and lifestyle, etc. Whereas 14 years ago, there was no, if I'd have said to somebody in that store, do you know what gluten is? They'd be like, <laughs> no idea. Okay, so I have strictly avoided non-organic chicken. I don't eat red meats. I was vegan for four years and so I completely avoided meat which was really good for me. It allowed my body, it forced my body to clean itself out. And during that time period I ate something that I'm usually, in the beginning I was allergic to, peanut butter but my body allowed me to consume that as a substitute for meats and there are lots of great attributes for peanut butter that do that for you it's got a lot of fat in it it's got erythroid acid in it it's got a lot of protein and, um, and so it's a good meat substitute but now i eat chicken again but i only eat organic and when i buy it then I always buy range-free as much as possible. And that's not always easy to find, so I can't always get that, and I have to just get what I can get. But I totally will not. I will not consume Tyson chicken or any regular grocery store junk chicken that's grown in a cage. I do not consume that. And then if you can get the, the greens, it's, it, the chicken's been eating greens and bugs. If you can get the range free, way better too. That's just like that much better. Okay, um, I do not consume processed foods. Okay, so processed means that you take a food in its whole form, and then you take part of it out, and you throw it away usually. And then you just consume the other part. Like people only want to do the nice thing. They only want the, the easy part of whatever it is in life. Like they'll go skiing and they, they, they don't want to ski uphill like in cross country skiing. They want a, a tram or a, a lift 
to take them to the top electronically, uh, electronically, <laughs> by mechanical means. They want them to, to be t towed to the top of the hill, and then they get to do the fun fast part down. They don't want to do the exercise to go up. Same with bicycling and all kinds of things. People just want the easy part. Same with the winter. I just want to live in the summer, so I'll go south and where it's warm in the winter, and then I'll come back up here for the summer. You know, so in any case, I don't do that with food. I only consume whole foods. Um, I do not do process uh, like like preservatives. I do not do that. When I look at I look at every single label, every package. Even if, unless I've purchased it many times before and I absolutely know what the ingredients are, I always look at the labels. And so I do not do FD&C red number 47. I don't do any of that. And if it has like a long name, it's easy to see the chemical names. Glycamine hydrochloride, something you know like that. I don't do any of that. Let's see. What else don't I consume? Um, I don't do red meat. I think I told you that. But I just don't do... I'm not saying that it's not okay to consume red meat. Because there's people that consume gazelles in Africa. There are people that eat bear meat in Alaska. Whatever, you know, everyone is at their different levels and they have all of the different cultures and you can't fault somebody for just being born into a, a culture that eats monkey brains in the Philippines. You know, that's what they eat. But um, personally, me, I don't consume, I, I occasionally I'll consume some red meat, but I don't digest it very well. And I know where I'm at personally, you know. And so it's important to, to do that, to know your culture. Look at your ancestors. There's probably available information on the Internet to be able to find out where your ancestors are from or ask your parents or grandparents. And know, you know. Um, I don't eat any microwaved food. I really, really, really avoid it. Um, the other night I was here and the person that owns this house made some microwave food and I ate it. But I really <laughs> seriously avoid that <laughs> if at all possible. Um, I don't eat food that's hot and then it's been thrown onto plastic. I stay away from that because hot foods and plastic are not good. As well as tomatoes and metal. Tomatoes are acidic and it's not good to throw those like to cook in metal with plastic with or cook tomatoes with metal because that that acidic nature of tomatoes absorbs the metal from the pan. And I really seriously avoid aluminum foil touching my food. I really avoid that. <laughs> and so like baked potatoes, you know, I don't wrap a baked potato in aluminum foil to cook it. And like back in Scouts years and years ago, you build a fire, you know, and then you take your aluminum foil and wrap a whole bunch of food up in it, you know, your corn on the cob and potatoes and all of that, and you throw some meat in there, and then you throw some tomato sauce in there too. Oh boy, that'll really suck up that soft aluminum that's, uh, that's just going to absorb right into your food, and then you eat it. Now, that brings up another thing. Something that I do consume that I wish I could avoid is little fish in aluminum cans. Where do you get sardines fresh unless you live right on the ocean and you know somebody even that's a fisherman or what, something like that, you know? Because for the most part, sardines and um, clams, I think you can get clams in glass. 
You can get oysters in glass too, but man, I like the smoked ones. And that always comes in a little little aluminum can. Let's see, what other things? I totally, totally avoid GMO. Like, like it were a bad disease. <laughs> Whatever that one would be. Um, what's the, the new one from... Uh, Africa that's here. Somebody write that down below. I don't watch the news. That's another thing I avoid. That's just about as bad as any of those or worse. And so um, I don't consume also. What else? Um, I'm just pulling these off of the top of my head. And I shouldn't even make a video stating the things that I don't do. The next video is going to be the foods that I really like and that I maybe that I force myself to eat. <laughs> and I think they're okay, but I have to kind of, yeah, I better eat some of that. But um, let's see. Uh, bread and milk. I'm trying to eat more and more whole grains and less bread. In fact, for a while, all I consumed was those flatbreads that didn't have any yeast in them at all. Um, I don't consume fruit that's not organic, okay? I really know that one of the foods that's sprayed the most is fruit because the bugs like to get after it. Bugs love fructose. They love sweets. And the sweeter, the more likely they're going to attack it. Now check this out. My friend Dave said that his apples, he said, check this out, my apples, as he's picking one off the tree, have organic stickers on them. And he said, see that? As he po pointed to a bug hole, a worm hole, <laughs> that's an organic sticker to Dave. And I really like that. I think, think that's cool. And yes, I would much rather eat a, a big old worm hole than with the worm in it than pesticides on an apple. So I totally avoid fruit that's not organic, even if it's local. That's another thing. I always stick with organic, even if it's been flown all the way from New Zealand, over local sprayed pesti fruit, sprayed with pesticides fruit. I totally avoid that because it doesn't matter. I mean, local, yes, is great. But if it's been sprayed with pesticides, don't fucking eat it. Now, squash, I'll generally take the chance and not worry about it. Some vegetables, yes. Some vegetables, no. Like cabbage is heavily sprayed. Any of the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli or cabbage or uh, Brussels sprouts. Man, I love Brussels sprouts. But organic is really expensive. So sometimes if I really want to eat Brussels sprouts, I'll eat the non-organic ones. Even though I know that they've been sprayed. Ugh! I know I shouldn't do that. In any case, um, I can always get cabbage organic. I can always get broccoli organic. I can always get kale organic. I can always get peppers and tomatoes. I won't consume tomatoes or blueberries. You know, you'll see blueberries in those little packages. I do not consume that unless it's organic. I know that it's probable that those have been sprayed. Let's see. What else will not I consume? Um... I'll think about that while I'm telling you that I always go, I always choose the health food store, not always, but mostly. And as far as some things go, I can get them at the regular grocery store a lot cheaper. And I just know, like for instance, peanut butter, I can get for half as much organic peanut butter. If I can find it at a regular grocery store, I can get it for half of what I would pay at the uh, health food store oftentimes. Not always, but, um, you know, 
items that are kind of more mainstream that the public, the general public wants and they're starting to get into organic, you can often find those at the regular grocery store for a lot less. And that's going to create pressure on the organic food stores. Oh, I totally, and this goes along with processed foods, I totally stay clear the f away from canola oil. Okay? Now, other than I put it on my sewing machine parts. I use it, yeah. I bought a gallon of it, unrefined, which is not edible. See, canola oil in its natural state is not even edible. It has a nasty taste. I haven't tasted it, but I've read about this. And it has a nasty taste, a bitter taste. It's not edible. Only refined, modified canola oil is edible. And it's mass produced, and so it's really cheap. And so when you go to Whole Foods, you're going to see in their hot bar and in some other items in their cold bar that everything has canola oil in it. I totally avoid that. And when I go to Whole Foods, I complain. I say to the manager or I write out a thing, wherever, and I've been to a lot of Whole Foods over the last several months, I'll tell them, why are you using canola oil? I'll tell you why. Because it's cheap. It's cheap and, the, and your management has decided to use something that's saving them money. Instead of raising the price a little bit and being ethical, they're using the, the dirt cheapest oil that they can use. And they'll say, oh, but, but the stuff gets mushy in the, in the cold case because uh, of using olive oil. Well, you don't use olive oil. Use sesame oil, unrefined sesame oil. It's awesome for cooking. And um, it tastes really great. And coconut oil as well. So stay away from processed foods and stay clear the fuck away from canola oil except for in your sewing machine. Now check it out on Wikipedia. It'll, it'll tell you right in the very beginning that they used canola oil in steam locomotives in the 1800s and um, probably the early 1900s too. So I tried it in my sewing machine. It works awesome and it doesn't leave any residue. Like I've tried a few other oils that left like an orange cakey residue and that was no good. Because see the, the uh, penetrating oil, the industrial penetrating oil that I was used and that I was turned on to by my sewing machine man has this nasty, nasty, stinky smell. And his predecessor died of liver cancer from using it day and night. Now if you work with something that's toxic, it's likely that if you just keep exposing yourself to it all the time and you don't figure out a good alternative, like my uncle died of brain cancer because he kept spraying his crops with pesticides every day. He'd sit in the tractor, he's cruising along every day, blasting gallons and gallons of pesticides on his land every day. So he got brain cancer and died. So in any case, those are some of the things that I totally avoid going in here. There's also things that I avoid going in here. There's things that I avoid going in here. And then there's other things that I try to avoid that I'm not doing so great with now because I'm traveling. Absorbing into my body from the air. <sighs> it's amazing all this shit in this world that we have to be aware of. Just all kinds of stuff. But at the same time, not stress. Holy shit, how do you do that? <laughs> you better call me. You, I'm sorry, email me. And then I'll give you my number. Email me, brett at vitalitymassage.net. B-R-E-T-T -T at vitalitymassage.net for a consultation. Okay, so I hope you're doing well. Bye.